in today's video we are going to discuss about internal load balancer Azure internal load balancer is a component of Microsoft Azure's load balancing services that is designed to distribute network traffic to the resources located in a virtual network that is not exposed to public internet either it is particularly very useful for creating a highly available and scalable application within a virtual network and here are going to be the common use cases for the Azure load balancer you might have on-prem site which is connected to one of the Azure region or multiple region with this express route circuits and you want to access your applications privately or internally that means this whole connectivity that is going to be routed for the traffic which is going to be the internal only so this private load balancer it will have one IP address which will come from the VNet and with this with the help of the express route you are going to have this routing in place so users can access this IP address and further this traffic will be distributed to the virtual machines those are part of the pool another use case can be multi-tier application that means the traffic might be coming from the internet which hits your public load balancer and this is going to be the public IP and this is going to get distributed to the pool of which you can call the DMG basically and from this DMG your traffic will be hitting your internal load balancer and then further get distributed to the virtual machines in this private pool you can also use internal load balancer with your NVAs those are going to be the network virtual appliances in this example I'm showcasing these VMs those are going to be Palo Alto firewalls and here you can see there's an internal load balancer why do we use this for suppose for example you have multiple spoke sites and when the resources are trying to reach out to the internet you want to basically create a hub and spoke topology and all the internet outbound traffic will be exiting from your hub site that means all that traffic should get directed to these VMs and these VMs are or you can call it cluster this is going to be behind the load balancer and this floating IP will be retrieval from your UDR routing let's see how to build or create a load balancer which is going to be internal in nature so click on the load balancers if you have seen earlier videos I have created load balancer and that was public facing this time I'm going to create the internal one hit on create and when you create it I'm going to name it ILP or whatever works for you you can mention it and it was a standard I will keep as it is last time we have chosen the public and this time I'm going to choose the internal load balancer let's configure the front-end IP add a front-end IP and when you add it this IP is going to come from your virtual network and a particular subnet so I will give a name IPIP a virtual network I will use this one and subnet is going to be 10.5.0.0 slash 24 you have option to assign IP address dynamically or statically so let's leave it to the dynamic and you have option you can choose or mention the IP address from that particular range so let's just go for this now look at the option where you want to deploy all my resources they were part of the June journal deployment and it was June 1 so I will continue with the June 1 let's add this IP address this IP address is configured and it's time to add the pool now those IPs are reflecting here if you recall it we in the previous lab we have created VM1 let me find the right IP address VM1 LB 
and the second one was this one we will use those IP addresses let's save and now I'm going to review and create validation pass it might take a couple of seconds which should be quick enough now my load balancer is created you can see the status however the full deployment is still in progress Let's wait until this completed or oh, this quick. So go to the resource. Now let's take a look on the front end IP address. This time it is a private IP address which is part of a subnet in a VNet. It's my backend pool. Load balancing rules, inbound NAT rule, health probes. I'm not going to explain if you want to learn more these are very very similar in nature when we created the public load balancer no difference at all so you can refer to the previous video if you want to explain these and when you configure the load balancing rule it is also going to be the same you can add a rule and in the rule basically you're going to put a rule rule one this is going to be the front end IP address. You need to mention the pool. So all these things remain same. There's no difference in terms of the capability of the load balancer, whether you create the public and the private, it's just the IP address which gets changed. So I will stop this here itself. And I do not have any additional verification which is going to be different from public load balancer. So that's all uh, the set for this session and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next section.